Um, your job is to take this three by four matrix and reduce it down into its reduced row echelon form. And in the process, um, please do list alongside what are the steps that you're taking. So what are the row operations that you're using? Um, one of the irritating things about this is it's going to be hard to type this stuff into your Google Doc. Um, so if you would prefer to do your work on paper, take a snapshot and upload a photo or something like that into your Google Doc, that's maybe a quicker way to do it rather than wrestling with typing all these numbers into arrays as you go along. As long as your handwriting is legible and, and well enough organized so that when your team looks back at this later, they can use it as a study aid, uh, then you should be all good to go. Um, so let's take... Let's take our time on this one. Um, the first few times you do row reduction, it'll probably take you a little bit. Um, so at least 10 minutes. Um, and if we need a little bit more time at the end of that, I'm you know, happy to take a little bit longer. Uh, so 1.2.10, reduce this matrix into its RREF and see what you find. So here's what one of your teams um, decided was a strategy to reduce this matrix into its reduced row echelon form. Um, so it looks like their first strategy was to try to get a one in that first row somewhere. And so what this team decided to do was to add a copy of row three into row one to turn this two into a one to make that a candidate for a pivot. Right? So it becomes one of our hammers. We could have circled it right there if we wanted to, because then we can use that one to cancel out the, the negative two that's underneath it and make it into a zero. And then also to cancel out the negative one that's at the bottom by adding one copy of the first row into the third row. And so then it's wiped out everything on its column. Uh, and at the end of that, then the focus turned to the second column where we have the next hammer, the next one of our pivots, um, and already happens to be a one, which is kind of nice. We didn't have to do any hard work. And so then that one can be used to cancel the negative three that's underneath it. Um, and then we move our focus to the third column. And when we move to our focus to the third column, what ends up happening here that's sort of different than what happened previously? that row three, column three entry ends up being a zero here because the same row operation that zeroed out row, th uh, row three, column two, also zeroed out row three, column three. Because when you look at those entries, right, one, two in the second row, negative three, negative six in the third row, um, that those two entries in the third row are just negative three times both of the corresponding entries in the second row, right? Um, mm -hmm. they, they, they stand in a two to one ratio here and a two to one ratio there. Right? And so we can't cancel out this entry without also canceling out the entry next to it. So it will be then impossible for us to have a pivot in that third column because we can't have another pivot on the second row because it needs to be the a pivot needs to be the first non-zero entry that we that we see from left to right. We also can't have another pivot on the first row. Um, and if we're going to have a pivot in the third or third row, it can't be in the third column because this entry is a zero. Um, and there's nothing else that we can do to kind of make that entry not a zero anymore without also screwing up the fact that we had a zero here that we wanted. So the next pivot that we find ends up being in the fourth column. And so what they decided to do here was just divide that third row by 32, which ordinarily dividing an equation by 32 you know, creates nasty fractions and stuff like that. And nasty fractions are always a possibility when we're doing linear algebra. Um, it's in fact a very rare occasion, like just mathematically, statistically speaking, that we can do a reduced row echelon form without encountering nasty fractions along the way. Um, but this happens to be an example where we can because it's the only non-zero entry on its row. So if we divide by 32, it just turns into a one with nothing else untoward happening in the process. That makes that entry into a pivot, and then we use that pivot to hammer out the other entries uh, that are above it. And so here is what would then look like a reduced row echelon form for this matrix. So we've identified every one of the pivots, right? Every pivot is the first non-zero entry in its row and is to the right of every pivot that's above it. Every pivot has zeros both above and below it on its column. Uh, and any complete rows of zeros that exist, which there are none, are all the way at the bottom of the matrix, but there are none, so we don't have to worry. So this is a reduced row echelon form for this matrix. Great. I want to quickly point out that once we shift gears away from this section, and we can do this with technology, um, if you have a graphing calculator, which I don't like using for the most part, only because you know I don't like having to spend $130 on a tool that you're only going to use to take a math class, most likely, um, there are a lot of tools online for doing all kinds of mathematics. My favorite is the open source Sage platform. If you've ever used uh, Sage, it is a mathematical 
computer algebra system and programming language that runs on kind of a, a Python uh, architecture that's underneath it. And so a lot of the codes you would use in Sage are the same as, as corresponding codes from Python. Um, <clears throat> But Sage is sort of built for mathematics in a way that the, the plain Python language is not. So we can do linear algebra quite readily in Sage. If I want to put in a matrix, I just have to use the command matrix and then tell it what are the dimensions of the matrix in rows and columns, so three rows and four columns. Um, and then I just have to list out the entries of my matrix going across each row um, without doing anything special, just putting them in square brackets. And if I do that and assign it to a name like A, then if I ask Sage to just print the matrix A, then this is what it'll show me, right? So I can verify that this is the right matrix that we're looking for. And then I can ask Sage to tell me the reduced row echelon form by calling the RREF method on the matrix object A. Right? So that's A dot RREF with a pair of parentheses after it. That's how we can instruct Sage to tell me what is a reduced row echelon form for this matrix. And what we notice is that actually we do get a slightly different answer here uh, than the one that, that the team that we looked at proffered. Um, so let's just real quickly um, just step back through a, a sequence of row operations and see if we can recover uh, the example that came up when we just did this with technology. So here's our original matrix. I'm just using this kind of old school looking tool, but what's nice about it is it lets you do kind of one row operation at a time. Um, so let's add a copy of the third row into the first row. So that was the step that that the team that we just looked at decided to take to get that first pivot in the upper left. And now we're going to try to use that pivot to kill off everything underneath it. And so we'll add negative one times that first row into the second row so that we get a zero in that uh, second row first column entry. And then add a positive one copy of the first row into the third row to get the corresponding entry down here on the bottom. Okay, so far so good. Um, but notice that, I think, didn't I do the same steps that this team claimed to have done? No, I guess they did They did do, they did take a step that was a little different uh, here. So they, they did row two is row, no, I guess, hmm? no, they did that step right. Or they, at least we did the same step there in the process. Let me just proofread. Um, I think you're looking at two different matrices. Oh, I, I am too. looking at two different matrices. That would be why. So not only do the authors of our textbook change the numbering of the activity, they also change the, the original matrix from the activity. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a little bit asleep at the switch uh, on this today. Um, all right. So, yeah, let's, let's start this over here and then just verify that we're doing the right thing. So if I go, I think I just have to go back. So a three by four matrix, and let's get the entries to match up with what you had in your file. Ah, negative two, one, six, one. This is what we get for going as long as we have in our class today without a break. We're going to take a quick break after this and then come back for our last 10 or 15 minutes uh, of the day. Uh, minus one, minus three, minus four, one. Okay. All right, so let's step through this process the way that you, you chose to do it before. So we added one times the third row into the first row in order to get us that one in the first row, first column entry. That becomes our first pivot. And then we'll use that to cancel out one times, tw twice the second row added, sorry, twice the first row added into the second row to zero out the entry under there. And then one times the first row added into the third row zeroes out the entry at the bottom left. So far, so good. Um, now this one right here becomes our new hammer and we can use it by adding three times the second row to the third row to cancel out that negative three that's underneath it. Now we see what happened in the, um, in the exercise that, that the team showed us is that this third column now loses its ability to have a pivot in it. And this final <clears throat> uh, row here is 32. And so let's see if this actually works. I'm not sure if it's gonna do this right multiply it by one over 32. Oh yeah, actually it did it, cool. Um, so now my last row has that one and I'm gonna use this one, which is a pivot as a hammer to get rid of negative nine times the third row into the second row. We'll get rid of the nine that's above it and then negative four times the third row added into the first row gets us that. And so then this is our reduced row echelon form. If we look at all the steps that were done uh, in the process. It took us seven steps to get there. Um, and I think that's probably the most efficient way. Um, I don't think there's a way to do that in fewer steps than I'm aware of. 
Cool.